Consider this for a moment, if you would. What if there was something that we could do that could actually change our perception about what was actually possible and the way we could live our life? Would you do it? Sounds interesting. And what if we could decide how we were going to show up and then live as that authentic person despite what we've learned and been told by other people? Well, the good news is, if you're interested, you can. It's a process called individuation. Let's start here, though. If I said, which came first, most people would say I was referring to the never-ending chicken or the egg debate. They'd be right. Science will tell us, though, that it's actually the egg that came first. Now, it turns out that the chicken is what came out of the egg, but the egg came from a different species, which was most likely the jungle fowl of Southeast Asia. That's evolution. And like that first chicken, well, who we are from birth isn't necessarily who we're meant to be as an adult. And becoming who we're truly meant to be is a must for us and all those around us if we want to truly live a happy and successful life. It's our personal evolution into individuation. So if I could give you an idea what individuation was all about, I would start by saying it's a fairly thick psychological theory with many different facets. So if I could take some liberties and simplify it, I would say that it's like adult puberty. <laughs> now, stick with me for just a moment. But I mean, puberty, no matter what our childhood upbringing is like, most of us have a sense that around the age of 13, something's going to occur. And with that, it's going to change the way we behave and feel about things. Individuation, on the other hand, is something that nobody's ever told us about. But like puberty, it too changes the way we behave and feel about things, and it affects all of us potentially several times throughout our life. Now, a clinical description of individuation would come from Carl Jung, who's one of the forefathers of modern psychology. And Jung describes individuation as the central process of human development. And he goes on to say it encompasses the philosophical, spiritual, and mystical areas of the human being. And in the broadest sense of the term, individuation can be defined as the achievement of self-actualization through the integration of our conscious and our unconscious. And the way I like to say that is that it's like taking all the desires and dreams we've had about the life we could live and making them a part of our everyday life. Now, part of the disconnect and the reason that we need to go through stages of individuation as we mature actually start when we're growing up. You see, as children, we need to take on the persona and personalities of the families we're with so we can be accepted as one of theirs, be taken care of, and hopefully feel loved. So we quickly learn that we need to go along to get along, but in doing so, we fail to blossom into the person we're innately meant to be. Now, as we mature, we have a responsibility to evolve and individuate into that person we're actually meant to be so we can bring our true gifts and talents to the world. And at the end of the day, that should be something we would want for everybody, especially the ones we love. Now, I think what it must have been like for that first chicken. It potentially went from predator to prey in one generation. And I can picture two lions in the jungle one. And one says to the other, hey, I wonder what jungle fowl tastes like. And the other one says, I bet you tastes just like chicken. <laughs> ah! Hey, who are you calling chicken? <laughs> so... I have my own chicken and the egg story. You see, some time ago, I hired my first executive coach to help me get a promotion that I was working on, but so far mm, was unsuccessful in achieving. And what the coach and I quickly discovered was that the reason I wasn't getting the promotion had nothing to do with my job performance. It was because I was still behaving like that little boy, you know, the one I thought my family expected, and me desperately trying to please everyone around. Now, I'm sure you can see how that type of behavior really wouldn't work well in the corporate setting, and my coach clearly had his work cut out for him. Now, that way of being that type of behavior for me started when I was growing up, because like many children, I didn't feel like I was getting the attention I wanted or needed, and so I had a hard time understanding what I was supposed to be doing and really how to go about doing it. Looking back, I would jokingly say that what I went through was P-A-D-D, Parental Attention Deficit Disorder. Now, <laughs> that's not a real thing. I just made that up. But what that PADD gave me was the ability to understand of how I could be in service to others in order to get what I needed and to take care of myself. And going through that was both a plus and a minus, right? Because on the one hand, it caused me to feel, you know, isolated and wanting the attention of my mother. 
But on the other hand, it taught me to be self-sufficient. Life's funny that way. So as I got older, I realized that if I had a job with status, you know, something that was important, well, that could probably help me get some of the attention I wanted from my mother. So when I found an opportunity to apply for a bank manager job, I jumped on it because I knew that that would be a career choice that would meet her approval. Now, I didn't belong in the banking industry, but my learned childhood people-pleasing social skills, <laughs> well, they kept me in the game and moving along until eventually I hit a promotion roadblock that I couldn't get past. And so I strategized that if I would hire that executive coach I mentioned, I could get the promotion. And you know what? I was right. On the day that my promotion was made public, after the announcement, I called my coach to tell him the good news. And while speaking to him, I broke down into uncontrollable tears that I didn't understand. I mean, what was going on? I just got the promotion of a lifetime, and here I was melting down emotionally. That was the first sign something wasn't right, but I didn't yet understand what was going on. It turns out that six weeks later, I actually quit that job. And I quit because I realized that the only reason I was doing it was to prove that I was worthy of the love and attention from my wife and my mother, but I wasn't doing it for me. And that was the second sign something wasn't right. This time, though, I knew something was about to change. So after consideration, I decided I'm going to go back to school full time and get a master's degree in counseling psychology with an emphasis on career development. And I didn't talk about the idea with my wife or my mother. I really didn't care what they thought. This felt like for the first time I was making the decision for me, by me, damn whatever consequences. Now, <laughs> it's possible I didn't think this through completely because as a full time student, I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to survive financially. And then one day out of the clear blue, as life sometimes does, I got a call from one of my previous direct reports from the bank, Julie, who now was a fashion and design teacher at a local continuing education school. <laughs> and Julie says, hey, Anthony, I want you to come down and teach professionalism to my students. <laughs> and I thought, you want me to do what? Uh, I've never taught a class in my life. I don't know how to put something like that together. And plus, you know, I'm scared stiff of public speaking. But I also realized that I'm the type of person that if somebody asks for help, I can, I will. So I did the best job I could at putting something together. And a week later, I was down in Julie's class giving the presentation. And here's the kicker. Not only did it go over well, but it felt great. For the first time, I felt like I was being recognized for my true talents and skills, rather than what I experienced most days, which was to produce in areas where clearly I had shortcomings. Word got around about my presentation, and before I knew it, I was getting paid to speak on the topic of professionalism at schools all throughout the area. And that was the start of my individuation journey. By no longer being who other people expected me to be and discovering and becoming the person I was meant to be. Now, I think back to that jungle fowl and the chicken, and I think like them, Individuation is a generational chicken in the egg question. I mean, which came first, the healthy family or the individuated child? I think that a child who grows up in a healthy household, who's encouraged to go out and be their best and discover their true talents and skills, well, I think that child has the best chance of going through at least the initial stages of individuation early, like maybe when they're going off to college, potentially University of Essex, choosing a major and what they want to do with the rest of their life. And somebody who goes through individuation early and often has the best chance of living a healthy and successful life and then passing that experience on to the next generation. Now, if I could give you a real life condensed version of everything we're talking about here, because I know it's a lot, I would tell you about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Now, politics aside, and no matter how their tale ends, theirs is a tale of individuation. They're breaking away from the royal family and the expectations put upon them to insist on being able to live the life that they felt was right for them and to pursue the things that were important to them, well, that's what individuation in this talk is all about. And let's be clear, this isn't about being selfish or self-centered. This is about giving everything you have to this one life in the only possible way you can, and that is to be who you're meant to be. Now, if you find yourself going through a stage of individuation, you're probably going to find that it's a rough and bumpy road because individuation usually involves change. And for most people, change isn't easy. For me, well, that change consisted of the loss of my marriage of 19 years and the relationship with my mother. 
And I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but I would tell you today that I'm the happiest, most successful I've ever been. And let's be clear, it's not because I'm a banker. Some of the last words my wife said to me as my wife was, you know what, Anthony? Status is important to me and you don't have it anymore. Okay. And my mother, well, she was willing to keep in touch with me via text on birthdays and holidays and so on. But she was never willing to go back to having a relationship with me unless I was willing to go back to being the person she expected me to be. And I would say that my individuation choices were sealed in eternity when I sent her the last happy birthday text. This is the response I got. Hello, Anthony. I had a wonderful week after my pacemaker implant. But I left this earth and went to heaven on June 27th at 1034 a.m., official cause of death heart failure. I have been cremated as per my wishes, and my ashes reside peacefully at home in the blue and white china urn Randy and I picked out for the two of us. As I am no longer here, there is no need to continue texting me. Now, I can't imagine anybody would want to receive a text like that. I mean, I know I didn't. And the best I can figure is that it was my stepfather who sent me that text but he sent it to me on my mother's phone in words my mother herself would have spoken. It was haunting. I received his text 14 days after I sent mine and three months apparently after my mother had passed, which was the first I had ever heard of it. And you might say, Anthony, that's gotta be a one-off. Those type of things don't always happen. And I would say, well, I work with countless clients, young, mature, and everything in between. And so many of them share similar tragic yet successful stories of how they uncovered the unaddressed roadblocks in their life through the disconnection of relationships that were no longer serving them. So here's what I want to do now. I want to give you three very simple questions so you can possibly look at your life and see where you are on your own individuation journey. Question number one, is who you are who you're meant to be? Think about it. Is it your life you're living, your career you're pursuing, your hobbies you're enjoying, or are you doing things that somebody else has said, hey, this is what you should be doing with your life? Question number two, whose expectations are you fulfilling, yours or someone else's? And question number three, are the things that you do each day, the things that make you happy and come to you naturally, even the difficult things, or do you struggle every day to fulfill your basic requirements? I know there are three very simple questions, but if you give them the needed time and space to truly be considered, you'll probably be amazed at the answers that you come up with for yourself. So here it is. In the end, explore your life. Ask questions. Talk to people. Find a mentor and find what matters to you and where you feel like you can thrive. We need to believe that who we are and the things that we want to accomplish in life matter and are the best path forward for us, no matter what those around us think and feel. Doing so is the quickest way for you to discover your true potential and the impact you can make on not only the world, but yourself. And at the end of the day, that should be something we would want for everybody, especially the ones we love.